chapter 1 is a fascinating chapter in the Bible. Uh, you Dick, think about this. Uh, the early church. The early church, the, the disciples, Pope or King, the one. Uh, what happened? What happened? He, he was crucified, right? He was right. crucified on the cross of Calvary. So, so uh, imagine these disciples walking back into Jerusalem. They had, uh, you covered this last week, they had, they had met together like Jesus has asked them to do, uh, and, and uh, he, they watched Jesus rise up into the clouds and, 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 and out of their sight. They watched that happen. And then, and then so what kind of picture, when they were walking back in, into Jerusalem, what kind of picture do you think that the, that the, that the town folk seen? What was, was it, were they discouraged? Were they beat up? What was, what, what? What kind of a, uh, if you were to paint a picture of them walking back into town to, to our watchers and the ones listening out there, how would you describe that? Well, I think that, I don't think they were jumping for joy. I don't think that they were dancing and, and uh, rejoicing necessarily because they had just seen the Savior return, even though they had been told that he was going to come again. They had been, they had been given a level of hope an expectation that had to begun to give them the same kind of courage that allowed verse 14 in chapter 1 to say they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Um, there had to have been still a, a spark burning within them to figure this out. Oh, yeah. Even though it wasn't 100% figured out in their mind, there was a spark that they said, we're going to go with this, and we're going to spend time together praying and studying. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. There had to be something going on inside of them that sparked hope and boldness. I mean, something huge. I mean, that even gave them a sense of excitement, or they wouldn't have come back into Jerusalem. They would have got out of Dodge, right? They right. would have got out yeah. of Dodge because they would have been afraid. And remember when Jesus, when, in, uh, when Jesus was first resurrected, what did the disciples do? They went in that upper room and they, they hid. Right. They hid is yeah. what they did. They were scared to death, afraid that the very same thing was going to happen to them, to them. That, that, that it happened to Jesus. But not now. They had a sense of boldness about them. They, they knew something really special. Yeah, the, the difference between the time after the crucifixion and now was they were hopeless because yeah. they forgot yeah. what Jesus promised that he would be resurrected after the, uh, three days. Mm -hmm. Now they had the hope of him coming back, and all they had to do was just to tell everybody, yep. and he would come back. And that's right. And they, they, they were like, if we can just get started, we're going to tell the whole world, and he'll be right <laughs> yeah, back. Absolutely. Because yeah. they had three things. They had the, the request of their Savior to stick around Jerusalem because I have something for you. Yeah. They had that commission. A promise. That commission that said... This, is, this powerful thing is going to happen mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit comes. And then they'd also had uh, the angels telling them, look, I know this is tough for you to see Christ yeah. disappear in the clouds, but mm -hmm. he's coming back. Yeah. And those three things began to build inside of them something that perhaps they hadn't seen, like Etienne said, yeah. on the other side of yeah. the cross. Yeah. That's right. Somebody look up uh, John 16, 24, and somebody else maybe Romans 8, 30, 8 I'll do, 34. I'll do so, Romans. Romans 8, 34, yeah. and then John 16, 24. You know, what gave them, what gave them, what gave the disciples so much boldness and so much hope? And as you're going there, I, I want to I wanna paint a picture uh, in your mind. Uh, picture, they hung out with Jesus, for what, for 50 days? You know, after, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and, and then range. around 50 days, and then, uh, to, and, th and, then, and then they watched him. Now think about this. They, they, they looked at his hands, his nail prints hand. They knew that it was Jesus had been crucified. They, they, he, he had carried them back in the scriptures and, and, and opened up their mind to, uh, and gave them understanding through the, through, through the Spirit. He breathed on them and they understood the scriptures and they understood that Jesus was a fulfillment of the scriptures. He fulfilled the scriptures and then they watched him. They watched him rise up uh, in, in, out of their sight into the clouds. So they knew, they knew that they could count on Jesus. They knew that he was up there. They knew that he was at the right hand of the Father and that, and that, that, he, and that he was going to hear and answer their prayer. So let's read these. Which, who wants to go first? John, uh, John 16, 24. I'll do a little, <clears throat> little intro. Um, John 
verse 22 uh, says, So you also have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Your yeah. hearts will rejoice, and no one will rob you of your joy. And that day you will not ask me anything. I assure you, anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Yes. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. Amen. So, you know, when I read that, you know, often I think the prosperity gospel people jump on this mm -hmm. verse too, and it says, anything you ask for. That's not what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, ask what I would ask for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Got to line up with That's God's right. will. That's right. Kingdom. This is not God. just passing presents out to everybody. It might not be good for the, us. No, this is ask what i would ask for you yes from my father yeah. and my amen. father will give it to you amen and, and i love that you good take point. you yeah. take that and yeah. you marry it to the fact that as they came back into jerusalem they did a lot of praying mm -hmm. and you have to know that those prayers lined up with everything that they had been told i've got something yeah. coming for you mm -hmm. i've got i have yeah. a, a commission for you yeah. they had to been praying in line with that yeah because look at how their lives were transformed. Mm -hmm. If you look at that early Christian church, mm. it tells us that people sold everything they had and everybody had everything in common. There was no one that was poor. Yeah. They took care of every person's need. Yeah. That can only happen. Yeah. If there's a transformed heart. Yes, yeah, something big was yeah. going on huge, on the inside. Huge. Yes, yes. And that Holy Spirit would have had no power had that transformation not taken place. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Brent, go Romans, ahead, Brian. Uh, Romans 8.34. Romans 8.34. says, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So that verse is yeah. packed full of oh, yeah. crucifixion. Yes. It's full of the hope of the resurrection, yeah. the idea that God is interceding for us, yeah. that, that God is there uh, on our behalf, yes. praying for us and, and seeking what is yes. best for us. It's, yeah. it's, well, it's why they were able to go back into Jerusalem. That's right. With boldness, knowing that, 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 uh, that Jesus was at the right hand of the Father, knowing that he was interceding on their behalf, this was their this was their their big brother. This was their savior. This was their Lord, and he was on their side. and And he and he was a promise keeper. Gee, that's one thing that that they knew for sure that God was a promise keeper. And so they they their that would had to, their faith meter was just was just extremely high because they knew that they could trust God. One of my favorite scriptures is Hebrews seven twenty five. Wherefore he's able to save to the uttermost. For those that come to him in prayer, seeing that Jesus forever lives to intercede for them. In other words, they knew that he was up there interceding, uh, wanting to help out, uh, no matter what was going on in their life. So, uh, here, after they now, after they came back, and they were they were they were in the upper room. What, what were they doing during that time? What were they What were they doing? Um, and I think uh, Acts chapter two, verse one, pretty well kind of opens up when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place what were they doing there well a few verses before they had a little um, housekeeping business to take care of mm -hmm. they had lost a disciple and so they spent time knowing that they needed that leadership they took yep. time to uh, to take care of business and and pick uh, Judas's replacement but I think it goes back to the words um, they were all there with one accord in one place. Yeah. And that only happens when there's a tremendous amount of not only prayer, but there's also a lot of repentance. There's a lot of soul searching. Absolutely. There's a lot of study. Yeah. Um, you, you don't get to that place. You know how these disciples were. Yeah. They That's were a right. ragtag group of hothead. You, you, had a, you had a zealot and a yes. tax collector. That's right. Um, there's two ends of the spectrum right there. <laughs> and suddenly, uh, and, and we see it in a couple places in the second um, chapter as well, but here at the beginning, they're in one accord. I don't think that means that they all had the same personality and mm -hmm. the same likes and dislikes. Oh, no. But there was, there's, there was there's a great human. equalizer in, in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
and, and in the promises and the assurances that God gave them that leveled the playing field and allowed yeah. them to stay there and be singularly focused. Yeah. The, the record says in Luke 24, verse 53, Luke 24, verse 53, said that they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. So there was, they, was, they was in the temple. They were praying. But, but, but not only were they praying, we know that, that, that there was a change in them. Etienne spoke of that earlier. Right. You just spoke of it mm -hmm. in something. There was a transformation that had taken place in their life as they prayed. And I've often said this, you know, uh, prayer doesn't change God's mind. It changes our heart. Mm -hmm. And as they right. prayed, as they prayed, as they kept, kept that connection with God, and they, and they reflected back on and meditated on the total, totally selfless life of Jesus Christ in his mission, their hearts were broken. You know, the sons of thunder, you know, who wanted at the right hand, you know, of, of Jesus. And, 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 then, and then you take like the, the other personalities that, that we have there is they took their eyes off their self and they put it on Jesus there was something that happened in them that totally changed their 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 agendas from a self agenda to a Christ's agenda. Yeah. I think it's important because as you go through the book of Acts, you realize that this they weren't perfect. Yeah. They still struggled. They still had personality conflicts as the early church began to grow. But I think that what happens in these first two chapters, they realized, and then you see what they were doing. You realize that that the Holy Spirit was a watershed moment where everything changed in their yeah. lives. Yeah, yeah. God, God worked in a in a powerful way. What do you think uh, that that that, um, that they were that they were specifically standing on uh, and praying for? Well, for the promise for what? That's thing. it. That's that, right. that, the that. Holy Spirit. I mean, they they knew yeah. they needed that because yeah. without that, John is sixteen Jesus, seven. Yeah, John Jesus 16, 7. promised them that it would be expedient for them if he left. Yes. yes. Because he could only be in one place at one time, but the Holy Spirit could be with them forever, any place, any time, yeah. with all of them all at the same time. Yeah. And so they were praying for that power because they were chomping at the bits to yes. get busy. Yes. Because they want Jesus to come back. That's what I hoped you'd come back to. At they the want end. Jesus to come they back. They wanted him to, to come, come back. back. That was, that was their number one agenda. Right. That was their focus yep. that, that, took, that, that superseded all other focuses. They wanted Jesus back because he had promised them. Remember, right. in, like John chapter 14 yeah. and verse 1 through 3, he promised them, I'm coming back. Right. I'm coming back. I've gone to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming back. John 16, These 16, are the promises. Here's a promise that they stood on right here. 16.7? Yes, sir. Uh, it's John 16.7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him yeah. to you. And it's a fascinating concept that his, his physical absence mm -hmm. was what was going to bring the, the presence of God through his spirit that they needed. Yes. You know, and uh, unique concept. Yes, sir. Uh, Etienne kind of was kind of brought this up too. You know, they, they were, see, limited. Jesus had taken on humanity. And so limited with humanity, Jesus could only be in one place at a time. So that's the reason he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. So, so we can get this gospel spread out quicker. Right. Jesus has chosen the church to, to be his body. So instead of, instead of being one, and this is kind of a fundamental teaching in the Bible. You know, remember Moses was trying to do everything himself. And, uh, and his, and his father-in-law says, oh, you know, you're just wearing yourself out. And you're not doing the people any good either. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with the gospel. Many hands make the work lighter. So Jesus, through the work, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Jesus can reach more people than he could if he was individually on the earth here uh, doing the work. Right. So, for instance, if, 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 uh, if Peter was over here, and, and, uh, and uh, John was over here. Jesus couldn't be with both of them. But through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right. Jesus everywhere. could be in each person. person. No one That's could right. be closer to Jesus than, than you, friends. You can have all right. Jesus that you want. So what a wonderful gift that God has given us through the Holy Spirit. Well, you talked about the fact that, that 
he couldn't be, Jesus physically couldn't be everywhere. And you, That's you, right. you ask, what was it and why were the disciples so focused? You know, and for me personally, I look at this commission, and there are 120 of them, 11 disciples, but 120. And they've just been told, you're going to reach the known world. Yeah. And they must have gone, I don't know how that's going yeah. to happen. But we trust but, you, Jesus. But if, but if it's, going to, ha but if it's yeah. going to happen, I think if you back up a few words, I'm going to need this power because there's Acts no, 1 8. There's no, well, Acts 1 8, there's just yeah. no way. Yeah. And that had to be a driving force. Not only that, and obviously then, hey, if we get busy, Jesus comes again. Amen. Yeah, I, I, just, I love that thought there. Yeah, you know, just think, just thinking back about what was going on up there in that room. Can you imagine all the stories, all the incidents that they recalled, all the promises oh, yeah. that Jesus gave them that, yes. that the Holy Spirit light brought back to their memory? All off. the ones that you he know, fulfilled, you know, the, all the way through the you know, fulfillment. Them confessing their unbelief mm -hmm. and who he was when he said who he was, and yes. they didn't act that way. Yes. But could the, you imagine? The desire to, to have a do-over. If they could just have that oh, three yeah. and a half years back, oh, but yeah. how differently would they approach walking with Jesus? Could, so much different. Could yeah. you imagine Peter oh. telling telling the story of his failure, but also the fact that Christ sought grace. him out? Right. Yeah. And, go and tell Peter. That's when the first go tell Peter. Yeah. And and this idea of I've been given a second chance and I'm not going to waste it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm making that up. But, right. But they all had oh, yeah. to have had stories, and you know, like any time you sit around reminiscing, yeah. the energy grows. That's right. And yeah. uh, so, yeah. what happened, guys? After after the spirit fell. What what happened? Paint us a picture. What happened after the spirit fell upon the waiting, praying disciples? The love of Jesus motivated. Them. Oh, I love it. The love of Jesus filled their hearts, and they said, "Whatever He wants from me, yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm going." They gave all. The That's the reason you a while ago you right. brought up about right. everybody didn't hold anything to themselves. Everything I've got is all for one. They were only one thing motivated them. They thought Jesus was going to come back really soon. That's right. But that attitude that they had, something happened because of that attitude. Well, I, I just love in verses 5 through 13, this whole interaction of suddenly they're so on fire and, and things are happening where the folks in town are going, these folks must be drunk. You know, uh, of course they weren't. Yeah. But um, I did some reading, too, about the, the idea that when they spoke, everyone could understand them. Yeah. And uh, it was suggested in one of the things that I read that it may not have been someone speaking in, in Hebrew and, and someone who is Greek could understand it. It could have been. But they, they believe that because of the Spirit, their words were suddenly razor sharp their words were crystal clear yeah. they could be understood there was a passion and a drive in what they were saying that no matter who listened mm -hmm. they could hear it but at the same time i believe that there were probably people who were hearing it in their native yeah. tongue in in the bible yeah. alludes to that too mm -hmm. that there were people from all different uh different walks of life different uh countries different languages yeah that that uh that could reckon they could it shocked them because these were uneducated men and they were hearing them speak very clearly like you said brian very clearly very precisely in their own language they knew that it had to be a miracle from god and think about this too because of the dispersion uh, that, that christians had been scattered out everywhere uh, they would lived in all these other countries. That was, can't you see now how God used that to spread the gospel really, really oh, yeah. quick? Quickly. Uh, because yeah. because when these people went back after these feast days and everything like that, they were sharing these. Hey, Jesus Christ, he he arose, he arose. God God came in in the form of His Son, and and he and he and he lived, and he and he loved us so much, he died for us. And I could just hear this. I mean, you could almost picture this spreading around the world, and. We know that in a very short period of time, the scriptures uh, uh, let, uh, share with the, the scriptures let us know that it went to the all the then known world. The gospel went to the all then known world. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's, it's funny when I looked at, at verse two and verse three. It was the wind that made everybody run out. 
to see what was going on outside. They didn't see the tongues. It's only the people inside the room that saw the tongues. That's what it appears to me. And, and, and the weird thing is here, it was the violent rushing wind that signaled the arrival of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with Elijah, it was the still small voice. It oh. wasn't the rushing wind there. Yeah. Yeah. So God can come in multiple ways. That's right. Here he used the wind to bring attention to his disciples. And that's the what arrival. made everybody run out to come see what the heck's going on over here. Mm -hmm. This huge wind all of a sudden just came out of nowhere. Yeah. This huge rushing wind, they come out to see what it is. And all of a sudden here you got Peter and all these people talking and everybody can but, hear in their own language. Mm -hmm. But they weren't just talking. They were sharing, they were sharing, sharing. the promises yes. of, and oh, fulfillment yes. of God. They had right. go, gone back. And, and you think too, these, these 120 people had been for nearly two months underground, quiet, yes. silent. Yeah. Scared. And, and scared and, and building their strength, their God-given yeah. strength. But all of a sudden, yeah. boldness. They had boldness. That's and all what of, I was all of a sudden, out right there. All of a sudden, this group that many probably thought had had gone off with their tail between their legs came out of not nowhere, but they uh, they exploded yeah. with God-given energy, and that had to have really rocked that energy town. and power. Uh, uh, that's Brian was the point I was really wanting to make there. Thank you for bringing that out because. They all of a sudden they were speaking the word of God with boldness. There were no Peter, for example. Uh, Peter was the very same Peter that had been cowered down and says, "I don't even know him," and, and he cursed, cursed, right, yeah. uh, you know, God, Jesus didn't cur use curse, you know, bad language and everything. He he now he's getting up. The very same people that he was afraid of the first time, he's telling them. You crucified. Oh, he pointed his you pointed his pointed finger. finger. You <laughs> crucified the, no, the, no. the Holy mm. One, the, the sin of mm. God. You did it. And, and then when he did that, when he had that kind of boldness, what did it do, what did it do to, to most of them that was listening there? Rock they, conviction. Rock well, conviction. In, in Acts 2, 37 through 39. Acts 2, 37 through 39. Listen to this right here. Now, when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. Now, I want to, I want to highlight something here about what he just said. He says, it, for, if, bab, Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, for years and years and years and years, the way that they looked at forgiveness was something that they would do on their own. They would bring the Lamb. The whole economy, the whole Jewish economy kind of surrounded was you know, surrounded by, by the sanctuary system, the right. offerings right. and, and everything. So basically what the disciples are sharing, every bit of the sanctuary, all the sacrificial system, all pointed toward Jesus Christ the whole time. But, That's right, amazing right. what he told them. Yeah. So Jesus is the one that forgives you of your sin. It's his death, not the, not the lamb. He was the lamb of God which takes right. away the sin of the world. But what strikes me in that passage there is, he looked at them, like Etienne said, and said, you folk yeah. crucified him. That's right. But in a few sentences from there, he says, but that sacrifice gives you forgiveness. Right. That gives you the That's ability right. to That's have right. the same Holy Spirit that we have. And so it's interesting. You've got to realize that in verse 36, when he, they say, you, know, you crucified Jesus, but shortly thereafter, that death yeah. gives you the right to salvation, That's gives right. you the right to yeah. eternal life and That's the right. Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. It had to have been a, a, a great moment in their hearts yeah. and lives. So a lot of things were happening, and these, like Etienne said, these were heart changes. This wasn't before religion. See, religion won't change you, but, but that deep conviction of the Holy right. Spirit working in you is where the change comes, that relationship. God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, uh, and, I, and I like verse 40 because mm 
Um, it says, this is again Acts 2, verse 40, and with many other words, meaning uh, Peter, many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then I like this next part. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were wow. added to them. Um, and I don't know how that happens other than they're not pouring the Holy Spirit. These were people who have been pointed, pointed to their own sins, potentially some of them the fact that they themselves uh, had crucified Christ. And they realized their sin and they gladly Receive that word and were baptized. You know, okay. it's almost when I look at this, when I look at this chapter, it almost looks like to me. Um, you read about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. You know, David quotes and he says, "Don't take your Holy Spirit from me." He, he writes mm -hmm. in the Psalms. So the Holy Spirit was active there, but it almost looks like he was fully unbottled after Jesus ascended to heaven. It was only after Jesus. Act Jesus' accomplishment of the sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection, that the Holy Spirit could be fully unleashed. Unbottled yeah. almost. Unbottled, yeah. you yeah. know. Because <laughs> you see him in the Old Testament. I mean, he's in Genesis 1, am I right? Mm -hmm. The Spirit hovered over the water. Water's so down. so he's there. And you read about him, but not to the extent that you see him active it, in, in the book like of Acts. It's like he was working a, a around them, but not in, in them. them. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Through, through the sacrificial right. death of Jesus Christ, right. his sacrifice was accepted in the promise of the Father, which had been God's plan all along right. for, for, for actually Christ to live out his life in us through the work right. of the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and it's interesting, so, though, because I'm going to back up just a little bit, and you guys can read it in its entirety, but if you go back in Acts 2, really read from 17 to 22, Peter takes them back into the Old Testament, into Joel. And it's interesting. They had known for a long time that something was going to happen as they got closer to Christ's return. Yeah. Because it says, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Sons and your daughters shall prophesy, see visions, etc. And Joel foretold that this amazing um, event would happen. Yes. But yes. again, like Etienne said, it's like the light switch hadn't quite switched on. Yeah. Guys, we, um, we go, we're going to, let me throw out a couple of things to think about that we can kind of wrap things up with. Um, because, yes, it's wonderful to see the and read about the, the special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But what about us today? Uh, and... Uh, and to lead into that, I want to ask a question you've already kind of touched on a little bit at the end, but what impressed people most about spirit-filled Christians? What, mm -hmm. what, what, in, what, imp what impressed those people? How, how was it that people would be willing to give their life? I mean, Christianity now is something that sometimes we got to worry about peer pressure, what other people think, but back in those days, being a Christian could mean that you could get your head chopped off or get stoned or or, or beaten, or at the very least. So, what what was it? What was it? Um, what was it that that, uh, that 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 really stood out about these early Christians? Etienne, I'll let you go first because you kind of touched on that a while ago. You know, I was I was just thinking about this. You know, so often we we hear people say, "Well, this is the sign that you have the Holy Spirit," and this is the sign if you have that. The true sign of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's only one sign of the Holy Spirit, and that's that I live my life and act my life and treat people like Jesus would treat that's them. Right. It's the only way. It's the it's the it's the it's the committed life of a Christian to be a true witness. Yeah. On behalf of Jesus. That's right. The only Jesus that people might see is you. you and me. That's right. You yeah. know. And, and, and that is what we should ask. That is what's going to bring conviction to people here at the end of time. Yes. Is not us preaching from the rooftop, but how we walk in our shoes. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is waiting for, is for us to let go of self. Because that you see it so clearly in this chapter and in chapter 1. The selfishness of, of John and James and Peter and all those guys wanting preeminence, that had to take a back seat. Yes. Because that has no place 
than the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. It's not how many people I win to the to the to the Lord. It's mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's how much how I can have my life ordered by the Spirit so I can walk like Jesus walked. Amen. Very good. So well, well it, I was gonna say that go I was what gonna take you? us to Acts two forty six and okay. it is exactly what Etienne just painted Amen. the picture. Of. That was because right just on, before that on. they talk about how they had all things in common and sold their possessions good and divided them. No one forced them to. This was done out of the depths of their heart. But verse 46 says, so continually, excuse me, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, one big uh, progressive potluck, I guess yes. you'd call yes. that. Um, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. What an amazing group of people to live with. What yeah. an amazing witness it was. Totally this, selfless. This, this was selfless right. living. Yeah. This was joyful living. This was life Christ -like. focused. Well, and, and life focused on others. That's right. And and it was infectious. People yeah. couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. In that the very life Jesus lived, when you go back and you That's reflect right. on the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in that the very same life that Jesus lived, now you see that very same life lived out in the disciples. In fact, it's said in the, in the Acts that, that they were amazed because they, they, he, they spoke like Jesus. They could mm -hmm. tell that they had spent time with, with Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And yeah. that, that's our goal. So uh, this has been a good study. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to go deeper, but, but look. Take that walk yourself. Go in and dig in the book of Acts. Don't read it to just read it really fast, but go in and just walk through it. Meditate on it. Try to put yourself where they were at. And 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 I want to end with Acts 2.39 with this, with this question before I read it. What about us? Can we have that type of Pentecost today? Can we have a personal Pentecost in our life? Is that is that possible? Let me re finish this and I'll finish up here. Acts 239, Peter says, For the promise is to you. The promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Friends, you have been called. You can have as much of Jesus as you want. All you've got to do is cry out to him. And I think uh, Etienne and Brian both did a wonderful job. The way you can tell that, that you have really been anointed or touched with the Holy Spirit is, is by a complete surrender of your life. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Have you allowed him to be Lord of your life and just come in and empty you of self and fill you with, with, with his presence? And mm -hmm. That's each one of our prayers. So um, we can pray for that tonight, but is there any other prayer concern that we've got that here that we can that lift up in. in prayer? Okay, all right. Well, then let me pray for us all. Can I do that? Yes. All right. Father in heaven, you're a good God, and we thank you for the gift we, that you have given each one of us, a promise. And we know that you are a promise keeper, that you're faithful, that, you're, that, that, that if you promise that we can take it to the bank, we can stand on it. We want you to come in our life. We know that you're not going to finish this work with less power than what you started. So we pray, dear God, for a special outpouring of your spirit upon us. Turn us upside down, Lord, and empty us of self, empty us of pride, and fill us with your spirit, Lord. We want to be filled with Jesus. Let this mind be in us that was also, let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us, and, and we'll see you next week.